Hello all and welcome back to Zoological Point. My name is Kyle and welcome to Shark Week. And by week, I mean week-long episodic educational course. Please don't sue me, Scott Free. I'm trying to teach people about sharks too, but with a focus on facts and less on fear-mongering. Let's start off with the largest order of sharks, the Carcharoriniformes, also known as ground sharks. As previously mentioned, this is the largest order of sharks, more than 280 species, including the Requiem sharks, the Cat sharks, and the Hammerheads. These elasmobranchs first started to appear during the middle of the Jurassic period and haven't changed much to this day. All of the members of the ground shark order are characterized by having five gill slits, two dorsal fins, with the second usually being much smaller, and an anal fin. <laughs> fin. Ground sharks are further divided into eight families, which are as follows. The Requiem sharks are live bearers that typically migrate and can eat just about anything that they come into contact with. There are over 60 different species, including the Black Tip Reef, the Blue, the Lemon, the Ganges River, and the Oceanic White Tip. The smallest of the Requiem sharks is the 70 centimeter long Australian Shark Nose Shark, whereas the largest is the 5 meter long Tiger Shark, aka the Cooler Great White, aka the Ocean's Mobile Trash Can. Weasel sharks are commonly found in the shallow waters of the Indo-Pacific region and live off of small fish and cephalopods. These rarely grow longer than a meter and a half long, although there is one exception, the 2.4 meter long snaggletooth shark. Now you may be wondering, why are they called weasel sharks? I don't know, I'm not an ichthyologist. The barbed hound shark is the sole member of its family and is a rather peculiar species. Only native to the Atlantic coast of Africa, this 75 centimeter opportunistic omnivore can be found in muddy estuaries from Angola all the way up to Mauritania. The barbled hound shark gets its name from the whisker-like appendages in front of their nostrils, which allow them to get a better understanding of their surroundings in murky water, similar to sturgeon and catfish. Finback cat sharks are a family of slow-moving meter-long sharks that primarily feed on fish and small marine invertebrates. As the name suggests, they possess a fin on their back, which is more predominant than the other cat sharks of their order. One rather unusual member of this family is the Harlequin cat shark, which possesses gill rakers, which are tiny cartilaginous appendages which allow them to filter feed. Although, not really, but kind of, it's hard to explain. The false cat shark family consists of two genuses. The aforementioned false cat sharks, which are like your typical cat shark, except they live in the deeper parts of the ocean, and... I am not making this up. Gollum sharks. Yes, named after that Gollum. Lord of the Rings kind of looks like a carotid artery. That Gollum. I think that says everything that needs to be said about them. Moving from the false to the true, cat sharks are the largest family of the ground sharks with more than 150 different species, and there are even more that have yet to be recognized by science. Every species of cat shark are bottom feeders, and they primarily feed off of benthic invertebrates and small fish. With more than 100 species, they're one of the most unique groups of sharks, full of different shapes and sizes, although none grow larger than the meter and a half long, large spotted cat shark of the northern Atlantic Ocean. Interestingly enough, these feline-esque fishes get the name cat shark from their cat-like eyes, not from being total jerks. Who would have thought? Without a doubt, the easiest family to identify are the hammerheads, due in part to their unusual T-shaped head. Now, the reason why they have their quote-unquote hammerheads is to, it allows them to easily detect prey using their highly specialized sensory organs. These organs are often used to find their favorite prey items, stingrays. Despite being hunters, that doesn't stop the smallest member of their family, the meter-long bonnet head, from occasionally choosing the vegan option, as they have been documented eating large amounts of seagrass, making them one of the only omnivorous sharks. Unfortunately, all species of hammerheads are currently threatened with extinction, which is even more of a reason to switch to a sustainable source of seafood, as the primary threat to them is being caught in fishing nets. Finally, we have the hound sharks, which are medium-sized temperate dwelling sharks. Some of the notable members of this family are the leopard shark and the critically endangered school shark, which is often hunted for their fins to use in shark fin soup, which is a traditional dish dating back to Eastern Asia. Thankfully, many countries, including the US, have began to ban this dish or require the use of a substitute rather than an actual shark fin. Because remember, fins belong on sharks, not in soups. And that's all the ground sharks. Thank you all so much for joining me on this episode of Shark Week, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Heads up, things are gonna get rough.